Uh, hey, how's it going? Name's Aiden. And, uh, I don't really get rage games. Look, as someone whose hobbies include having, you know, fun, <laughs> I just don't see the enjoyment of wasting blood, sweat, and tears just to beat fuck guy. One game, though, has recently changed my mind a bit, and that's not because, you know, the game actually looks nice and has effort put into areas other than making me want to find the devs' current location. Now, the thing about Jump King is that it kind of seems like everyone sucks, right? Oh my god! Oh fuck! No! You see, if that were me, I would simply just not fall. This is because unlike these so-called content creators, I am a real gamer. I have many lives. Look, streamers and YouTubers throwing for content isn't a new conspiracy, but I wanted to try and get some evidence myself as to whether this game is all it's cracked up to be. However, I don't exactly have a chat, so I thought a good compromise would be to play the game for 24 hours straight. I, I mean, look, it's a simple game, just a man escaping his boots, going on a nice little stroll through the mountains, or something. Honestly, how hard could it be? Now, the first section of the game isn't anything crazy, and despite the wonky controls, I'd like to think I was making right. progress. Alright. Alright. Okay, this took a while to get back up to, but now we're here, so we're all good. <laughs> Until about 12 minutes in, when I started to realize what I'd done to myself. <laughs> this is gonna suck so much. Alright. This section contains the first real challenge of the game. No. Big drain. Okay. It's hey, a large yo. drain. God damn it! A massive drain. Oh. Some might oh. even say that it's. Oh, oh, oh. Big. Oh. However, with enough patience, I eventually did make it to the last screen, which was a couple for short jumps. What? Now, there's not much to say about this section. It's pretty easy, yeah, and I definitely that, didn't waste yeah, any of my time on it. And I definitely didn't there. miss that one jump. No. Songs, that would be stupid and bad, and I didn't do that twice. Oh my God. That would be dumb. Yeah. Bargenberg is an abandoned town, bought and owned by the one and only Mr. Bargain. Hello. This section was actually pretty nice. It had, you know, you know, great vibes. Even with this jump, which was notoriously difficult. But honestly, it didn't really seem like much. I didn't really think what the big deal was. It's not, not going to be a problem whatsoever. What is that area? <laughs> now look, at this point I was actually getting pretty hyped. I'm crazy. I'd vaguely remember this being about the halfway point and hadn't really hit any major roadblocks in the less than two hours it took to get there. Honestly, I was kind of going crazy. I mean, I was crushing this game, man. I was on pace to beat it in like no. five or so. No! No! Oh. Now look, while my mental state was clearly perfect, break shin, gonna break shin, gonna put them in the box. Gonna put At this point, the dogs were barking. I mean, literally, that my dog was barking. I had to go take it for a walk. But you know, maybe it was a good thing. I, you know, just go get some fresh air and go. So yeah, there may have been a little power edge in my entire city for a full day, which is fine. It's it's fine. And you know, how hard is it to find another period of 22 hours to devote solely to Jump King? Okay, back at it. Okay, look, in my defense, these taxes weren't gonna fraud themselves. I was a little worried since I hadn't played the game in so long, but it only took about half an hour to get back to the frontier. And when I did, I was faced with the first real, real challenge of the game. This goddamn screen contained two solitary flagpoles, which were very skinny and very hard to get onto. After a lot, and I mean a lot, of ramming my head into a wall over and over again, I finally came up with the optimal strategy of ramming my head into the wall over and over again. <gasps> yeah. Aha. No. Okay. That wasn't too bad at all. Yeah. That's easy. This is easy stuff. This is easy stuff. The stuff here is easy.
I'm gonna chill here for a second. This is where things started to go <laughs> really bad. <laughs> See, Stormall Pass introduces two new things, heavy snow and heavy wind. Now, neither the snow or the wind itself was that awful. Now, the main problem was that every single time the wind changed directions, it took about 10 seconds to change again. That meant for a new player like myself, I could only really make 6 to 7 jumps a minute. So when you include falls and the like, well, you can start to see the problem. There's more! God damn it! No! Ah. Let me up! Oh my god! Hey. After three hours in the snow, I had finally made it to the first and only hard checkpoint in the game, which, fun fact, I didn't know existed. But god damn it, I woke into it like it was my own son. God damn it, and just like with my own son, I was incredibly disappointed. My original plan was to finish the game in the single digits, and then use the remaining time to see how fast I could speedrun it, and hopefully get a good enough time to put on the leaderboard. At this point though, I had less than one hour to stay on target, no idea how much more game there was, and was really regretting my decision to do this. Right, back to it. Hmm. Anyways, uh, moving on. I, I could give you the rundown on the next two sections, but A, only one jump was hard, and B, my hatred for said jump can only be expressed through song. First try. <laughs> F At 3 in the morning, just under 12 hours in, I was only 4 screens away from finishing Jump King. All that remained was the tower. Now, strictly speaking, this section isn't that hard. The ice is long gone, and the platforms are nice and thick. You can honestly consider it to be one of the easiest sections of the game. But after 12 hours of running, the sheer anxiety I felt near the top knowing I was almost done and knowing I was getting to the point where if I fell it was going to get harder and harder to get back up made it very, very difficult. No! I slipped! hours, I was starting to question myself on whether the streamers were actually throwing or not. Would they really sacrifice their sleep and their sanity just for a couple more minutes of watch time? Would they really go to the lengths of compromising their integrity, all in the name of content? Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, they, they would. I mean, no one would actually miss that jump if they, that would be stupid, so it had to be intentional, and if anyone says otherwise, you, you should, you should bully them. Bully people online. I, hey, it's me, Mr. Influencer, so you should, yeah. Well, now I know I can do it. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. That's it. Stop the goddamn timer. Okay, so maybe it wasn't a good run. Or an average run. Or a run. But try telling the 6 a.m. me. I don't think he's missing. <laughs> I ended up with an in-game finish of just over 13 hours, and taking out some of the AFK time where I forgot to pause the game left me with a slightly more respectable time of 12 hours and 38 minutes. If you're wondering why that matters, it means I beat about half the streamers I set out to beat. If you're wondering why that matters, it doesn't. I just need this. Well, I guess time to do it again now, huh?
I ended up passing out after the run and woke up with 7 hours and 30 minutes left on the freaking, clock. I'm a, I'm a phoenix. Shit. This was the time I was going to use to see how fast I could speedrun the game. What followed though was possibly the most depressing and uncomfortable commentary of all time. Dude, there's no- So I'm not gonna show you any of it, because it was really bad, just trust me. Something interesting though is that for whatever reason, completing the game just once kind of unlocks this part of your brain that's like, hey, you can play as Luigi now and just do good. So the gameplay wasn't bad, and I still do want to show it to you, but it's like seven hours, and I'm not really sure if it's in a good way. I failed it. So if you didn't catch all that, I managed to get two new Holy PBs in the seven and a half hours Woo! I had left. It would have been three, but on my 12 minute run, I choked at the very top. Again. This brought my final PB to 14 minutes and 48.59 seconds. It gives me a final leaderboard placement of 959th out of 994. Still beat the Danes, baby. Woo! I'm not too shocked about that. To be honest, at some point this challenge turned from speedrunning for 24 hours to just surviving it. Look, I've played games for long periods of time before, but I gotta say, this James Jump King really knows how to break a man's emotional security. Hey, 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 hey. Despite wanting to off myself for most of the challenge though, I'm really happy that I did it. I don't know, I see all these videos nowadays about how games aren't as fun as they used to be, and sometimes I agree. I feel like it was so much more fun when I was a kid sitting in front of my Wii, but honestly, I think that's just because everything matters so much more when you're a kid than when you have real life to deal with. I might not have been having fun, but I haven't felt that passion about beating a game in so long, and I honestly encourage anyone feeling this way to maybe try something like this themselves. I, I mean, don't do this, this was stupid, but you know, figure out your own thing. Anyways, that's the video, hope you liked it, I'm gonna go to bed, bye.